Forum. My name is Ruth Ann Webster. I'm serving as president of the League of Women Voters here in New Ulm. Uh, the League of Women Voters is a nonprofit, nonpartisan political organization. We're interested in issues. Uh, we don't uh, focus on candidates or, uh, or support parties. We support democracy by uh, empowering and educating voters. And one of the things that we're interested in is anything that has to do with what's going on in town uh, and where, uh, where some, of, um, some of your donation funds and some of your uh, tax, tax money is going. So uh, today, I'm interviewing, today I'm interviewing Kristen Walters, uh, who is with CADA. And I know that some of you do not know what CADA is. Huh? I do. <laughs> I do. Uh, but I'll let, I'll let Kristen introduce herself and then uh, talk to us. Tell us, for someone who's never heard of CADA, what is CADA? Yeah, so my name is Kristen, and mm -hmm. I am the Development and Communications Director at CADA. Mm -hmm. And CADA stands for Committee Against Domestic Abuse. Um, we... Uh, just went to our shortened name a little bit ago um, because we're we're much larger than a committee mm -hmm. and uh, we also serve victims and survivors of sexual violence stalking child abuse more than more than domestic violence mm -hmm. um, but CADA is a nonprofit serving all of region 9 um, all nine counties and we serve victims and survivors of relationship abuse. Uh, would you tell us the history mm -hmm. of CADA, please? Yes, CADA has been around for over 40 years. Um, and we started as just a, a little house in Mankato uh, that was a shelter for victims and their children. And we have grown mm -hmm. since then and have been in this community for decades and are happy to be mm -hmm. here. Now, um, it, now CADA, uh, is not a national organization or even a Correct. Right, 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 but there are other other nonprofits who do this kind of work, is yes. that right? Yes, throughout the state there mm -hmm. are 90, maybe 100 other um, domestic violence, sexual violence mm -hmm. victim service agencies. CADA is the only one in this region. Mm -hmm. um, the closest one to us <clears throat> is Rochester or Fargo, mm -hmm. or I think Shakopee. Right. So we're right. the only one in Southern Minnesota. And you operate out of a number of different locations. Yes. Can you just talk about those? Yep, we have um, our office, our shelter and administrative offices and advocacy offices in Mankato, but we have um, offices, six other offices throughout the nine county region, mm -hmm. one in New Ulm here right on Minnesota Street. Right on Minnesota Street, right, yep. right. And you recently moved across the street. Yes, we just moved yes, across the street. Right. I would call that the old Jacobs Meidel business. Yes. But, it, but it, you know, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> Bumbalo, you know, I Bumbalo, think. Bumbalo, yep. and then it was Bumbalo. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, I know the the the, uh, the people who uh, need your help need help, right? Yes. So can you talk talk a little bit about about the, uh, the specific uh, services that that you provide to anyone who mm -hmm. finds uh, finds themselves uh, in a situation where they are being uh, abused in any yes. way. So we have 24-hour help for people experiencing violence or, or their family, friends, loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, we have our 24-hour helpline um, that people can call or a 24-hour web chat. We have a shelter. Our advocates who work in our different offices do everything from helping survivors fill out protective orders going to court, reporting to police, um, facilitating support groups, whether online or in person, um, any kind of emotional support or safety planning that a survivor needs, whether they're leaving a relationship, living in a home where abuse is happening, um, we can help no matter what direction a survivor is, mm -hmm. is going in. And you mentioned family. Yes. Too. Talk yes. a little bit about that. We uh, get a lot of folks calling um, our helpline who are loved ones of someone experiencing violence, and mm -hmm. our advocates are great at walking those folks through different steps to support them. Mm -hmm. um, if they have questions of why why is why is she with this person or how can I what do mm -hmm. I need to do to, to help her, mm -hmm. um, our advocates are great at mm -hmm. walking through that with someone because it's a really tough position to be in. 
Uh, you and I talked ahead of time. Uh, and I know that you've got a website. Yes. And I'll, we'll, before we leave, we'll uh, give that uh, website uh, to NUCAT so they can put that up because mm -hmm. uh, you talked, you told me about, and I ask you to tell the folks about, uh, what information is on that website. Yes, and uh, there's information about all of our services. There is um, an about um, section that just has more information about what domestic violence looks like, what sexual violence can look like, how these issues can impact children or young adults. Um, we have all of our information on our wish lists or donations or volunteer opportunities, internships, mm -hmm. um, kind of anything you need to know about CADA can be found there. You talked, uh, we talk about some misconceptions that people have. Yeah, I mean, misconceptions about survivors themselves, I think, you know, we've all seen a Lifetime movie where, um, you know, it's a, maybe a, a typical um, experience of, of abuse, but abuse can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. Anyone from a CEO to someone who's in college to um, people experiencing homelessness. It's an issue that can impact anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it really does um, touch every aspect of someone's life, whether mm -hmm. it's how they parent, their financial stability, their housing, um, people lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really can impact um, any aspect of someone's life. Um, this leads me to, um, I know that uh, CADA works with other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about, because can you talk about the nonprofits that uh, our viewers would mm -hmm. be uh, familiar with that you work with here in this yeah. area. We get referrals from a lot of nonprofits and make referrals to a lot of a lot of nonprofits. Um, Ivy House, Numa's House, um, many different others. Um, our advocates are. That's why we like having advocates in the communities that we serve because they're familiar with what resources are available mm -hmm. to the people coming into their offices. Um, so we're really proud of our our good partnerships mm -hmm. with other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk about how CADA is funded. Yes, we receive a large government grant that comes from a combination of federal and state money. Um, and we receive other grants from other foundations, mm -hmm. Otto Bremer Trust Foundation and, and others. Um, but the donations we receive from individuals living in these communities are what allow us to do more than just the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. They allow us to be flexible and to meet people's really unique needs. Um, so we're extremely grateful to have such a supportive giving community mm -hmm. that helps us um, go above and beyond for people. Well, and it's uh, getting toward the end of the year where a lot of people decide they're going to uh, support organizations. Is that information on your website? Sure is. Sure is, yep. if you want to donate. Uh, and um, let's see, have you got any, uh, You've been you've been with Cada for quite a while, right? Almost twelve years. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Have you seen any changes or things that you've uh, want to have yeah. experienced? I mean, during COVID, I think that was obviously a drastic change for for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it was unique hearing the public discourse about domestic violence change um, when we were in lockdown. Um, mm -hmm people were stuck at home with their abusers and there was a lot of news coverage about um, how violence was impacting people who were stuck at home. Um, so that has kind of, I think, changed people's understanding of violence. And I would say since COVID too, um, the issues that people come to us with are just more complex. You know, um, whether they haven't fully recovered financially from losing employment during COVID or, I mean, COVID really, um, did a number on people's mental health and still is. Um, so I think that the the issues folks are coming to us with are even more complex. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the government funding has not kept up with, mm -hmm. with our increasing needs. Um, so that's been a change that I've seen mm -hmm. over the last 12 years. Right. Yeah. Um, what would, uh, are there any future plans for CADA or what, any goals yeah. that you've got? Um, yeah, no, go ahead. our goals are really to continue, well, I'm the development person, so mm -hmm. my goals go, my mm -hmm. thoughts go to fundraising because we have seen um, nonprofits like CADA across the state 
really struggle with these government cuts. Um, one shelter, a 22 bed shelter just closed last mm -hmm. month in mm -hmm. November. And I have never seen a shelter close mm -hmm. in my time um, in this movement. So our main goal right now is to fill the gap between what we're bringing in with grants and what we can raise from individuals in the community mm -hmm. so that we do not have to cut any services to survivors. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a wide range of, of services, right? Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, well, we'll talk about the wide range. I, I mm -hmm. know we're going to go uh, plow this uh, field again, but uh, talk, you know, a, a typical person would call and say, I'm in a difficult situation. What do you offer? What can you offer? Yeah, so we first offer um, safety planning. If someone's on the phone, we are figuring out, is it safe for you to be talking with us? Can we get you somewhere safe right now? Um, we have a shelter that um, women and children can stay at. It's in Mankato. We offer, like I said, advocacy services out of our um, offices throughout the, the service area. Anything from legal advocacy, help finding housing, help meeting basic needs like food. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a supervised parenting time center mm -hmm. uh, where non-custodial parents can visit with their mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. in a safe and conflict-free mm -hmm. setting. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, uh, let's talk about a success story. Yeah. Yes, yes. You've, because I, in the 12 years that you've worked there, uh, it's not all doom and gloom. I'm sure you've it seen is not. a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people uh, grow and survive mm -hmm. and live, um, move forward. So yeah, one that comes to mind is um, I worked as a shelter advocate for for many years, and one woman with her two children came to stay in shelter, mm -hmm. and they had left the metro area, and they eventually moved out, found their own apartment, and um, things were good. Within six months, I would guess, they um, had to come back to shelter because mm -hmm. her ex had found them um, and started coming to Mankato mm -hmm. and making problems, and it just wasn't safe for them mm -hmm. in that home anymore. So they returned to shelter, which mm -hmm. was very sad, but also good that they felt comfortable coming back and that they knew they could. Um, and we know abuse is a cycle that mm -hmm. continues for a long time, so it's it's... Not surprising when people continue to need our services. Um, she eventually moved out again, found a different apartment. Um, and after someone leaves, we keep in touch every now and then um, if they have questions about the new community or oh, where do I find the food shelf? We can answer those kind of questions. And we just heard from her less and less, um, which is pretty typical. Um, and I switched jobs to a more administrative position and I was um, answering our front door and it was her and she was showing up making a donation of a bunch of household goods and um, clothes because she was moving into her the home she was buying. Oh, that's a wonderful. first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. um, and she had been mm -hmm. safe and her kids were thriving. Mm -hmm. and it was, it was Very good. good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Good Very day. Good. good day. Good day. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, uh, up on the up on the screen, I know that New Cat's going to put uh, how to how to contact how to contact Kata uh, if you need help or, or if you want to uh, donate uh, or if you want to have some volunteer opportunities. Mm -hmm. Is there something we haven't covered? Um, we love doing presentations. Ah. So if your workplace or class or school. Um, organization or club um, have questions about domestic violence, sexual mm -hmm. violence, CADA services, healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. um, we're always happy to come do those kind of presentations. Um, yeah. And like I said, I, I know from my own work uh, and study that uh, the, these are complex situations. It's mm -hmm. not it's not every one side. It's not every, every, there's no typical. No. Yeah, yeah there's no. no typical. Although, it's uh, it's difficult. Well, and, uh, tell how do you how do you feel about this work? I love this work, and like you said, it it, it can be very tough. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not an advocate anymore, but I am always impressed by mm -hmm. the expertise, the compassion, the just awesomeness mm -hmm. that our advocates show up with. They're fabulous people. And yeah, yeah, it's, I love my job. I love Kata. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. We good, do good, good stuff. Well, thank you. Uh, we've been talking to Kristen Walters uh, of Kata.
Uh, and uh, if you need to find out more, they've got a wonderful website. I've been on it, so very good. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Yes, you too. <laughs>